Hello, Younger fans. I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is exactly where you want to be for an inside look at each week's new episode of Younger. It's your Getting Younger After Show. Here to break into tonight's episode with me is Hotshot Editor Zane Anders. It's Charles Michael Davis. Hello. Hello. Thanks How are you? Me. I'm pretty good. And as you watch along, we'd love for you to join the conversation by sharing your thoughts on tonight's episode in the comment section below. Okay, so let's get into it. We have a lot to cover. Okay. So the episode ended with some major drama for Millennial as Quinn pulled her investment and checks immediately started bouncing. Mm. Quinn is basically like a grown up version of like taking her toys out of the sandbox and like going home. So when you first read the script, were you surprised by Quinn's move? Let's say I feel like I know where she's coming from. Explain yourself. Um, I mean, she wants to, she's ambitious. Zane is ambitious. Yes. So I identify with that spirit. She is a Zane spirit animal, I think. Well, Just Kelsey in a different way. was like, I mean, I, I was like, yes, girl, go. But Kelsey was like a little obstinate to her investor. So mm -hmm. if I was an investor, I'd be like, no, I'm taking my toys and leaving the party too. Yeah, I mean, that's the, you know, they're strong personalities and mm -hmm. they both want the best. So there's going to be some friction. And I think rightfully so. Are we like wearing our capitalist hats right now? We're like, we so agree with Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> Get money. Uh. Well, here's a follow-up question. Do you think in business the person paying the bills is justified in expecting people to do whatever he or she wants? No, because, uh, well, there's paying the bills and then there's actually managing Fair. the company. Fair. And, and like in business, there are those. There's investors who just take a step back and they don't have a say in it. And the best kind. Yeah, and Quinn, I don't think Quinn really knows exactly the ins and outs of empirical millennials, so she should probably leave that to Kelsey. Leave it to the experts. Yeah. Give me your money, now bye-bye. Yeah. 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 I actually very much like that and agree with it, except if it's yeah. my money, and then totally opposite view. Yeah. Sounds like some girls I dated. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Continue. <laughs> No, this is not that kind of show. This is uh, not the conversation we're having. Yours it is. <laughs> <laughs> On a more positive note, one of my favorite moments in this episode is when Zane and Kelsey finally admit their true love. Uh, yeah. I know, it's really great. So, you know what? Let's take a look. What did you really think when I said I love you? You didn't say that. You said you were in love with me. Past tense. You still can't be honest with me. I was mad at you. That was a shitty and manipulative thing for you to say to me. But I was mad at myself, too. Maybe if we were just tougher and told each other the truth about how we really felt, then we wouldn't have wasted so much time and energy denying. Looks like you're off the hook. Denying that I felt, I feel the same way. Present tense. Now. Aww. 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 It's the first time I've seen that. That's so sweet. It really was. That was a dick move, though, that you did last season. <laughs> when you said, Oh, when I, told her, love? when I told her I, I, I was in love with her, yeah. 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 What was yeah. that all about? Now watching this scene. Um, I think it's it's tough for him to admit, um, or it's tough for all millennials to admit yeah. and be open and vulnerable. I think it, it kind of feels like you're giving up your position of power and leverage. How has it been for you to play him as a character that's grown and started to show layers? Um, it's a lot of fun because I liked the way that I came into the character. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't know whether to trust him, and then he gets to open up a little bit. Um, and also the evolution of his career from being with Millennial, working with Kelsey, and then, you know, being on the outs and kind of working his way back in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun to play that dynamic, too. When you came on, did you expect it to last this long? I kind of did. 
<laughs> You're like, um, <laughs> everyone loves me. Have you seen my poem? Yeah. I'm pretty charming. <laughs> You're like, of course I yeah. do. Well, I, I, I'd watch the show a bit and I'd kind of, you know, check to see what they're going for. We bring in a new character. I think you want to add a certain kind of chemistry. So that's also what I brought to the audition. Yep. And I know that, um, you know, it's more dynamic and it opens up um, Kelsey. The, the character, Hillary's character. Totally. So you get to see more sides of for her. So I, that's what made me think, you know, yeah. the character has some legs. Much better than Thad. <laughs> yeah. Love you, Thad. You served your purpose. I actually saw that clip the other day where, where Liza's talking to him and then the thing falls from, yeah. yeah it's pretty gruesome. Ouch. That's yeah. the word to describe that. It was yeah. just a little bit, a little bit ouchy. Um, I also love that Kelsey can't cook but Zane can. I love that. Can you cook in real life? No, no. No, nothing? Mm, I once learned how to make salmon on a plank. Okay, that's very much cooking. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, Could you recreate it? Yeah, you just soak the plank in, in, in water like overnight and then put it on for like 23 minutes on the grill. It's pretty but much now, a grilling. Now, it's a cooking show. Yeah. Okay, we have a lot to cover. Yeah. Zane thinks everyone is nuts for not firing Liza when they found out that she's been lying, and also for letting her continue to, to like, damage the company, if yeah. kind of damage the company. Of course, we all love Liza, mm -hmm. uh, but can you see where Zane's coming from in all of this, in his perspective? Yeah, he's he's always concerned about the um, the company as a whole and moving yes. things forward, and, and that risks every the whole thing. So, for sure, I see where he's coming from. I actually have to say I agreed with Zane. I mean, as much as I love Liza, I'm like, no, he's logically speaking, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's a, they're in all this mess over one person. Just like, so get rid of that one problem. Yeah, he's, oh, just, yeah. he's just saying, why don't you, like, tell the truth? And now we're in damage control. And like he said, you know, it's, he could have uh, prevented it. It was a preventable. Yeah. You know, they could have put that fire out a long time ago. Huh? Leave it to Zane to be logical. Yeah, but then there'd be no show. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Zane doesn't know that, though, in his universe. Don't tell him that. Yeah, he has no idea he's even on a show. Yeah. Poor Zane. <laughs> that was very, oh, it's very meta. <laughs> How would you react to finding out someone you worked with had been lying about who they were? Like, to what degree? I guess to, like, a Liza degree. Oh, like that billionaire heiress thing? Yeah. Um, I'd be like, well played. I'd be like, you do what you got to do. It depends on the context of the scenario. The what if it was a best friend? If a best friend had lied? Yeah about like who they were. Well, then they were never really a best friend, were they? Did I even know you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in this episode, Quinn is clearly caught in a lie during her New York One interview, which is delicious. But she doubles down and actually like conducts herself like a pro, which I have to say, I really admired. Are you someone who's more likely to play off something like that or just like freak out and come clean when you're busted? Um, I usually try to tell the truth as much as much as possible to avoid those scenarios. Yeah. Is it because you're just truthful or is it because you're a bad liar? Mine's because I'm a bad liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I realized I was a bad liar when I was a sales, when I did sales. I just couldn't, I couldn't convince anyone to buy anything and then I realized. What were you in sales? Uh, first I started in retail. I worked for Express and then I sold tickets for the Cincinnati Bengals, which is a very tough sell. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has been for decades. Did you sell anything? Uh, yeah, when the people came in, they're like, I want to buy. And I was like, great, because I don't have the heart to try to convince you to, you know, give me your hard-earned money for a losing season. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. I went to work for the Clippers, but we actually made the playoffs that year. That's a good thing. Liza, in this episode, gave quite a rant in the Infinitely 21 meeting about how, on some level, everyone is pretending to be younger, whether it's mm -hmm. dyeing your hair, wearing Spanx, I'm wearing them now, uh, anti-aging treatments, blah, blah, blah. Do you think that we really are a youth-obsessed culture? Do I think that? I don't have to think that. I'm on You're a like, show, I know I'm it. I'm on a show <laughs> called Younger. <laughs> it would be like against the whole premise of the show. And the show's a reflection of the, of the culture. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think we are. Um, like, I was saying, you go around like LA and you don't see too many old people and you don't see too many like children, it's just well, like. That's so true. Right? You're right, there aren't kids anywhere, and yeah. there aren't old people. If they're old, they look like they're not older than in their 40s. Yeah, and I got back from Japan in uh, January, and one thing I noticed was that they have respect for the elderly, and you do see a lot more older people there. Um, and yeah, it's a different, yeah, I think we hide all our old people. <gasps> oh my God, in that's old so. Folks homes. Can we fix this problem, do you think? Can we fix it? Just everybody watch younger. 
right? Watch Younger move to Japan and get some <laughs> <Okay>. culture. <laughs> <laughs> a good solution. Um, this is going to be, you're going to be like, are you kidding me? But do you think it's different for men versus women as we get older? Yes, I do. Do you feel bad for us? Or do you mm -hmm. feel like, mm -hmm. like you have an advantage? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, well, I, uh, we're all tied together. Like, we're all in it together. It's no, it's not you know, one against the other, this or that. It's, you know, I met, oh God, I, I met my mom, you know, she'd always get ready for work in the morning and she'd be like, Michael, you know, do I look pretty? She called it Michael. But, you know, I just remember being like, oh, I think she's worried about getting older, you know, and, and then, yeah. you know, learning kind of why. Yep. But yeah. Because when you're young, it doesn't hit you why. And then when you're in it, it kind of, you know, it was like, oh shit, age. Yeah. Well, underneath of it, and we're going to get all existential, is that it touches on what death. And yeah. then what are you going to do with your life? And what have you done? So it's not just a little wrinkle, it's a little reminder. We're all going to die. On that note, let's play a game. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Told you we were going to get spiritual. I know, we did it! <laughs> Hopefully okay. we'll get motivational. <laughs> it is game time. We're going to play a game that involves my most favorite prop. Uh, it's this giant wine glass. I drink... I drink my wine on this every night. That's yeah, how yeah, I yeah, stay that. so young. <laughs> no, it's what's aging me rapidly. Inside the giant wine glass are cards containing questions that are only slightly inappropriate and wildly embarrassing. So you're gonna choose three, and I want you to answer honestly, okay? okay. I don't know what he's pulling, so I know what's in there. These three. I know what I hope you pull. Okay. How much money do you make? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, here's a good one. Okay, read aloud. Who are you completely starstruck by? Yes. Uh, Denzel Washington. Have you met him? No, because I was so starstruck that I couldn't go over and introduce myself. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did you do like an Amelia Clark with Beyonce <laughs> where you like saw him talk to him and then just like melted into a puddle of yourself? No, I couldn't even go up and say anything. He was, he was walking out, uh, it was at Pan Pacific Park in LA, and he was walking out, and I was walking, and I was gonna go use the restroom, and I was with my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, oh, hey, isn't that, I thought he was a friend of mine, because he's so familiar. Yes. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it's Jamie. And I was like, no, that's not Jamie, that's Denzel Washington. And he started <laughs> laughing, I was like, that's Denzel Washington. And she's like, all right, what do we do? I was like, go ahead, you go to the bathroom, I'm just, I'm gonna go talk to Denzel. She goes in, goes to the bathroom, comes out, and I'm still standing in the same exact spot. No. She goes, I thought you guys would have been like best friends by the time you no. she came out. I go, no. I could I didn't even say anything. He just I just watched him walk by and then like get in his car and then he just took off. Oh, that's a sad story. I know, I know. And I love <laughs> Training Day. Like it's my favorite movie. It's I'm, so good. Yeah, but I'm like, what do you say? Well, like, you blew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, well. I'm sorry. Oh, well. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your worst habit? Uh, my worst habit, I don't know, it's uh, the worst thing, but it's costly, is when I get into something, like I really get into something, whether it's playing poker. Oh, that's costly. Buying jewelry. It's very expensive. I like it. Thanks. You're welcome. It's iced out. Got it where the rappers get theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Aviani's baby, 47. I hope they give me a discount. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, when I'm really painting, I like go and buy art supplies like crazy. I just collect them and I, some of them I never even use. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. That's like me. I start hobbies and I just quit them after yeah. I purchase all of the equipment to go along with them. Oh no, I, don't, I never quit it. I still have a camera. I was into photography, I still own a lot of camera equipment and I just keep it and I keep adding more to it. <laughs> so. I like that, it's not so bad. Yeah. Uh, what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done on set? Oh, Ooh. thank God it says on set. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a typo, it's just in general. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, most embarrassing thing I've ever done on set, one time, well, this is a different set, not on Younger, but on another show. Okay. Uh, they hand-stitched some pants because it was supposed to be um, a flashback to like the 1800s or something okay. like that. And so I like to do this thing, uh, if it's a, an intense scene, we're all kind of like squat down and jump up, and I squatted down, my pants ripped no. all the way from no. the crust. <laughs> And, Congratulations. Uh, and it wasn't like they had extra pants from 1800 <laughs> just lying around. So, yeah. So, you did the scene pantsless? No, we In old timey underpants? No, we took an early break uh, <laughs> and they, they fixed up the pants, I think. Okay, before I let you go, I need you to please give us a one word teaser for next week's episode Tatas. Ooh. 
Charles, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're so much fun. Thanks, yeah. And a big thanks to all you younger fans out there for watching and sharing your comments. I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is Getting Younger. Join me again right here, right after next week's episode, for more behind-the-scenes stories and insights from the cast. Until then, take a sneak peek at what's coming up. <sighs> all right, you feel good? <laughs> I feel good. And maybe a little bad, like I should be coming with you. I, you know, like, I, I, to help you prep or grab coffees or Yelp restaurants. Stop feeling guilty. <sighs> Quinn was a bad business partner from the start. Yeah, but one we needed. We will get the money. Everything is going to be fine. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. I wake up every morning and smile on my face. Subscribe to Younger Uncovered. The podcast dedicated to all things younger.